Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that I'm going to be talking about today. I got some news. I got some weather. I got some new programs that are happening this weekend. I got a, a nice little uh, video that I edited for the city of Missoula. I have dub and stuff, and I have yet another video I edited from the city. Woo! Got a lot of stuff. But I don't have any uh, city council report today, so it's going to be a fairly short show. So let's get right into it, folks. Uh, currently, it is 36 degrees outside. It's only going to get colder and colder. Today, uh, you can expect 50% chances of showers with a high of 52 degrees. Uh, tonight, it's going to be 37. It's going to be your low. Uh, so it's lower than the low today. So uh, on Saturday, you have a 60% chance of showers likely happening with a high of 49 degrees. By Saturday night, it's going to be partly cloudy, and then by Sunday it's going to be mostly clear with highs into the 50s. We might even see some of the 60 degree temperatures, but just in time for you guys go to go right back to work the following Monday. So this is the perfect time for some sweet, sweet sweater, sweater weather, My the perfect time of the year for me personally. So enjoy it, because I definitely will. Let's talk about some news things that are happening. So, you know, Local news, what's happening is that eavesdropping is a, seri uh, is a serious deal in a two-party consent, uh, is a serious deal, and in Montana, it's a two-party consent state, uh, so of course, 27 Missoula County uh, union workers, uh, county public works employees have filed a lawsuit saying that the county secretly recorded their private phone calls to union officials attorneys, doctors, and spouses. Union workers were the only ones singled out besides the non-union workers for the uh, Missoula County Public Works Department. The complaint uh, cites violations of Montana Constitution, privacy protections, and state laws that protect citizens against unauthorized audio recording, in addition to the county allegedly violating a contract with employees regarding when they could be recorded. So there are up to 15 cameras on the premises for the public works for the county, but there is a stipulation that they shouldn't be in break rooms and they shouldn't have any audio recording whatsoever. But of course, so far, the county union employees are looking to get compensated for all legal fees to prove that these events occurred. Whether or not they would get any more money for damages has not been cleared up. In state news, chronic wasting disease uh, has been... Uh, spotted in Huntley, Montana, in Yellowstone County. Yellowstone County has found a deer with a dangerous and apparently a widespread disease larger than, f than fish, wildlife, and parks could even imagine. Of course, CWD, otherwise known as chronic wasting disease, uh, is found in dirt in the form of prions. And prions are a very tough disease that lives within the dirt at extreme temperatures high and low. It's very tough and um, it's hard to get rid of. Deers usually get this from searching for grass in the soil and uh, as a result it is a basically kind of a nightmare uh, zombie state that they're in uh, while their brain starts to deteriorate, their body deteriorates along with it, but they still survive. Um, Although the disease was first detected in Montana in 2017 near Carbon County, this new discovery will put a kibosh on Yellowstone hunting in the area. If you do hunt, you do have to go through the proceedings and go through the uh, th what what Fish, Wildlife, and Park. Make sure that you send your uh, meat out to them as well. I'll, I will give you the address as well. So if you uh, hunt and you uh, want to send, you have to send samples of your deer to see if it has the chronic wasting disease. It is required in Carbon County and now Yellowstone County. So here's the address. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks. Uh, it's the Wildlife Health Lab, CWD, um, 1400 South 9th Avenue, Bozeman, Montana. And I'll show this again. So a little bit more information about this. So although the disease was, f um, so trophies and meats will have to go through the proper channels before hunter can eat or take them home. There is no known transmission of CWD to humans or other animals including pets or livestock. However, the Centers, for Disease Control, um, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that hunters harvesting deer, elk, or moose from the area where CWC is known to be present have their animal tested before consuming their meat and to not consume the meat if the animal tests positive. So if you are, if you are required uh, or feel like you your kill may have the disease, regardless of the area they're in, you you are asked to mail the sample between Monday and Wednesdays so I can get there in the proper time so they can get testing, and the results can take up to three weeks uh, to be posted as soon as online for you. So here, once again, here is the address. I'm just going to flash it up here. So if you're a hunter and you're worried about your meat might be tainted, this is a good place to send it to.
All right, another big news items that's happening as well is that there's a continuation of what's happening with the impeachment inquiry that was happening within Trump's. Um, the Democrats, Nancy Pelosi, uh, uh, said last week that they're going to be looking into an inquiry for impeachment based on Trump's uh, alleged um, allegation that he asked Ukrainian governments to um, check on uh, Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. So in a statement Thursday, Joe Biden, uh, uh, so what Democrats have issued the impeach inquiry because the talks with the UK investigation, uh, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden for Chinese ties while Joe Biden was in office, um, um, his son was uh, working in uh, the private sector through Ukrainian and Chinese government. So he, so Trump is doubling down on wanting foreign governments to investigate the former vice president who is leading a uh, challenger to Trump in the 2020 president election. He also uh, calling on China, which is run by an authoritarian government, to investigate this U.S. citizen. So in this case, Trump is getting those uh, uh, countries to investigate Hunter and Joe Biden not to, uh, not on behalf of the U.S. and himself, but also for their own sakes. Uh, but of course, uh, just so you know, this is an uh, inquiry into a impeachment proceedings. This isn't an, an official impeachment proceedings that's going on here as well, but it is the beginning factors of it, whether or not they can actually move forward on the impeachable offense, but then they need a two-thirds majority vote to actually put this through. So that's kind of what's happening there, and there's a lot of stuff going on as well, and you guys can check this out online or literally just in e within earshot because everyone's talking about it. All right. <laughs> Here are some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. Actually, I'm going to save this for a little bit later. I'm going to um, t t turn it over to a little bit of uh, Walk and Roll Week. Uh, so uh, earlier this, uh, just uh, uh, like last month, uh, just a little bit, a week or so ago, I, I, I went on a walking tour, and they kind of showed some of the new sidewalks within the city of Missoula. They got a grant uh, to, for they for them to up to update some of the sidewalks near um um, Lowell School in that general area on the west side neighborhood. So uh, without further ado, you, you get to talk a little bit about how uh, the neighborhood is changing on the west side. So without further ado, who's this? And then when I come back, I'm going to be talking about some movies that are coming out. This is the first time we've done this, so appreciate you joining us. My name is Catherine. I work for Missoula in Motion, um, and this week is our annual Walk and Roll Week. So we do a lot of different programs um, and initiatives to support sustainable transportation and encourage people to think about how they get around this week and to offer some encouragement with different incentives, uh, partnering with local businesses and things like that to get people um, to think about walking, biking, riding the bus, van pulling, or carpooling, um, especially as the school starts. Hi everybody, I'm Bill Piper. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator for Mountain Line. For those of you who don't need me, um, right now we're going to be doing what we in the transit industry call first mile, last mile, which is that you don't just magically get on a bus, you have to walk to the bus stop <laughs> to get on it, and 95% of people do that. Um, and so we're going to actually walk just a few feet right now uh, on a really nice sidewalk. Uh, but then we're also going to look at a bus stop that maybe isn't uh, doing what we would ideally like it to do. And we'll talk about it when we get over there. So this stop right here will have a concrete pad poured for it um, that will be ADA compliant uh, to enable people to get on and off the bus. Um, you can go onto our website, view all of the proposed changes that we're thinking about making throughout the system, uh, and we do have a comment form that Dan built. So if you do have a comment on a bus stop, whatever it might be, whether you like it or you think that it's that you you don't like what we're doing with it, we want to hear about it. So you know that's one of the reasons why we're really thankful um, that this group let us kind of jump on to the bus the uh, sidewalk tour today, uh, is because we're really just trying to get the word out about that. Um, so. It, you know, if you have a chance, check out the plan, and if you see a stop that you're interested in, please let us know what you think.
estimated how much a sidewalk costs, to tell you the truth, because I work at the health department, so I don't crunch the numbers like Monty does. And I was like, oh, we got all this money. We got $800,000. Let's go. And he's like, I'm like, how much does that give us? And he's like, almost a mile, Lisa. And I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> we got we to be digging for some gold, right? I think total project costs on this was uh, $914,000, so just a little bit under a million dollars. Uh, 261 of that was grant money and then partnering with uh, our road district funding mm -hmm. uh, and that's a small portion of uh, BARSA funding that helped with our drainage structures as well. We have pretty steep grade coming this way and this way down into here where it bottoms out and levels out. Um, so we had to narrow this road in just for topography purposes and not do a lot of retaining wall. We also heard a lot of concern from citizens during the outreach and the public hearings or meetings uh, about this being kind of a cut through corridor and, and a lot of speeding. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what we did is we bulbed out these two corners here to match this narrow road section up where we were having some grade issues <clears throat> uh, to help calm, do some traffic calming and help try to slow traffic down. There are no ramps um, this direction because of the slope. So. Yes, correct. So for ADA purposes, you know, we can match sidewalk grade to the running grade of an existing road. Uh, new construction is different. You have to bench out those intersections to address ADA requirements. But what we did here is because of the excessive grade, uh, what we would have had was a uh, fairly steep grade benched out because you have to get 2% cross slope coming across for these, these intersections. And so it basically would have created like a ramp. Uh, I, well, I, I just uh, this was, uh, every day. Yeah. So obviously you can see we have some bad sidewalk back here, but you know our funding only goes so far and we can't address everything with every project. Uh, you can see there's some potholes and some street sections that could have been addressed and, and some more sidewalk, but uh, we, we had to go back looking at the funding we had and then and design our project within those funding limits and so uh, there's still a lot of need within this neighborhood and even around some of this corridor. We just have a huge amount of roadways that don't have sidewalks and we have very little money um, compared to the cost so we want to be really strategic in where we invest those funds in sidewalks. Um, and, and so we set up some criteria on how we would select those projects and, and this particular grant funded project was an interesting way to sort of test some of that criteria. Hey guys, welcome back. So you got a little taste of what's happening with the West Side neighborhoods. A lot of sidewalks are completely different from one another. Some are unfinished, some are uh, boulevarding out, and some of them are basically adjusting and turning. Uh, it's all it's kind of all over the place because there's a couple trees right there. They're trying to make boulevards, but then there's some trees that have been there so long they have to just basically put um, sidewalk right against the street. And so that's kind of you know, it's it's, uh, it's 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 interesting to see a lot of the neighborhoods in the city of Missoula as well because there's some neighborhoods you'd be like, okay, so this definitely happened between this time and this time based on engineering and what the city of Missoula wanted at that time. So that's just kind of how cities work. It's kind of it's kind of pretty fun in that regard. Um, I do have another video I'll show you in a bit. Um, uh, how, a brand new dub and stuff, uh, but, I, but I'm going to save that for a little bit later because we're going to jump right into some of the new movies that are coming out this weekend. Ba ba! We get another comic book movie, but they're going to go in. They're going a little bit uh, for the gritty part, so they're going to try to ignore as uh, little as the source material as they possibly can, since it's kind of like it's an original story uh, based on the uh, Joker. So basically, this is an origin story for the Joker. And what they're going to be doing is he's a guy and he goes crazy and he becomes the Joker. That's basically the movie. And if you know who the Joker is, he's a Batman DC character. But in this one, it's just like, yeah, you know, we want to know the backstory. And, you know, if, if enough people want to go see it, they, hey, they might have a sequel to the origin story. I don't know. But blah, blah, blah. It's uh, basically the whole kind of concept of these kind of movies are usually like, it's society's fault, not mine. 
I'm the I'm the uh, reaction of the way society treats its own people, blah, blah, blah. And it also dives into a darker place of ourselves as we look into the movie directed by a guy who made the Hangover series movies, uh, Todd Phillips. Uh, so he basically see uh, uh, Zach Galifianakis from those Hangover movies become crazy because he kind of seems like he's probably more along the lines of this character and that one. So, of course, Todd Phillips takes inspiration from King of Comedy, uh, The Killing Joke other sources, other movies, and other things to explain a character everybody kind of already knows and kind of already imagines in, in their own head. Hey, I'm I'm more interested in having the actual origin story, which is a pretty much canon where uh, he gets thrown to a that a toxic waste by Batman. Moving on, we got a space movie. Uh, of course, Ed Astra came out the uh, last couple weeks. This one's another space movie, but it uh, follows a a woman who becomes an astronaut and once she goes into space she's like hey I like this place I never want to leave but unfortunately she leaves and then she spends most of the movie kind of going crazy and having the desire just to go back to space and in any way any way possible and of course uh, her story is kind of loosely based on Lucy Nowak for uh, a woman who was an astronaut and then when she returned to earth she attempted to kidnap uh, U.S. Air Force Captain Colleen Shipman and tried to take her with her car while she was in there. So that was this kind of uh, a little backstory. So if you want to look up kind of where this movie is kind of based on, loosely, it's Lucy Nowak. So, yep, that's it. Another movie, which uh, this is an Tony Banderas movie, and it's a foreign, fic, uh, foreign flick where it stars um, Antonio Banderas and a whole bunch of other people. Penelope Cruz is in it as well. Um, and he's basically a director. So it's a movie about a movie maker, and he's going through uh, a kind of like an artistic crisis where he must decide whether he blah, 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 and this and this, whether his, like his, in a way it's like he's loved as a filmmaker, but he retires kind of because he's kind of overworked and overstressed. And he's just like, maybe I should be a director again because everybody loves me that I'm gone. It's it's kind of like the whole, it's kind of like the whole kind of, uh, the artist makes more money after they're gone than they did beforehand. So it's kind of like art is never really appreciated at the time. So that's the kind of movie you can get from this one. And Tony Banderas. Woo. All right, so <laughs> there's a couple of movies that are coming out this weekend. I have another similar, if not amazing movie, and this is from the movie The City of the Dead from the 1960 movie. Uh, so without further ado, here is Dub and Stuff. Ew, gross. A, a basement. Ugh. Guess I gotta go find that treasure somehow. Ugh. Take it one step at a time. I gotta take it one step at a time. My mouth isn't moving, but I'm still singing. I gotta take it one step at a time. Oh, it's like a dungeon or whatever. Ugh, get out of my way. Uh, I can't believe I'm dumb enough to be down here. <laughs> Expecto Patronum. <laughs> I'm sorry, I parked in the handicap spot. I bought a Oh, jeez, I'm so I'm sorry. I, I I didn't get all the punches in my punch card, and I still demanded. Wrong place. See ya. I don't think so. You're coming with us. Ah, ah, <laughs> get off me! Get off me! Oh, Whoa. we will kick, kick, kick. It is the will of the will of the thing of the thingy. Now we will do what needs to be oh, done. Oh no, please don't do this to me. No, no, no. Oh, pl oh please, I promise uh, I won't do no, no, everything, no, no, everybody oh, pl oh, please, I promise. Uh, and uh, now you will no. save us all. No, you don't. No, no. Seven, no. Get out of here. No. Oh, no. Who's no. ready for? No, please. Cake. Oh, wow. This looks like a delicious cake. It was kind of weird that you oh, took so wow. long to say that. I like cake. But also, cake. happy birthday. Yo, yo, happy you. Happy birthday. Yeah. Gonna happy have birthday. a bad birthday. Yeah. Cut happy that cake. Birthday. Cut the cake. All right. Now it's time for me to clap. All right. Ready, boards? Yay. <laughs> doop, doop, doop. I like Wait, cake. Hold on a second. Like hold on a second. Gotta, gotta, I just want to know gotta, if you gotta, would, have what you wish for cake. for your birthday. Oh, I finally worked for Billichek to get what is coming to him. Oh, I see you're not much of a Patriots fan, are you? No, not at all. How could you ask me that kind of thing? I'm all about the Washington Redskins. They're going to win this one. I just know it. They look pretty tough. Well, I just think that their offense looks well, terrible, but their defense is pretty well, strong. not this year. Their defensive line is... 
You didn't give me a stripper, did you? Oh, nonsense. Just let me hold this cake. Uh, okay, okay. Hmm. I wonder who this could be. It could be anyone. Could it be Jesus hey. Christ? It's not Jesus Christ. How you doing, partner? I was wondering if your party was still going on. Oh, uh, well, yes, indeed. Come right in. Huh. I thought Soldier Boy was going to be in here. Did you get Soldier Boy to perform at your birthday? Oh, I couldn't get him. He's going through some kind of fraudulent thing with Nintendo. Oh, God, that sucks. I guess I'll stay. <laughs> Come on now to take a load off. Hang out for a bit. Uh, what about 50? Ah, uh, man. Hell, I'd be happy even with a clown. Did you get a clown at least? Oh, come on now. I just wanted a nice chill evening with ah, friends. I don't want to hear that. Friends suck. And besides, I just wanted to eat some cake and just head on out anyway, so... You know where the cake is? You aren't some kind of freeloader, are you? Well, yes, I am. Alright, let's get your cake and get you on out of here. But let me first make a phone call. Who are you calling? Is this watch repair? I need some uh, watches repaired so this guy would show up on time. Oh, that's a major shade. Hey guys, welcome back. It's time to talk about some of the things that are happening within the city of Missoula. It's time for your art walk, art talk. Uh, the, your first Friday guide through the city of Missoula. It's time for some First Friday shenanigans. So if you're interested in doing, going out and about, you guys can check out this uh, exhibit that's happening at the artist shop called Honor slash Remember. It's a mixed media group in conjunction with the Missoula's annual Festival of Remembrance. Um, Honor slash Remember is a mixture of media group ex exhibits f focusing on honoring and remember those who have gone before us. Um, and beginning the mortality of the forefront, artists include uh, Renee Taff, Gretel Stoud, uh, Tim Thornton, um, Bobby Tilton, uh, Kathy uh, Palo, um, Marley's uh, Borchers, uh, David Miles Lusk, uh, Patricia Thornton, uh, Katrina uh, Rumland, and Bev Glukert. So a bunch of great artists happening from the artist shop happening today. All this stuff starts at 5 p.m., so 5 to 8 p.m., and of course times usually vary, but the main core of First Friday is from 5 to 8 p.m. Another thing that's happening as well, if you want to hop on over to the Missouri Museum, it's the best place to go for free admission, free expression. You can go there pretty much any time, but this is their kickoff show for Rick Bartow. Rick Bartow, organized by the Jordan Schneitzer Museum of Art um, out of University of Oregon. Support for the exhibit is provided by the Ford Family Fund, uh, Foundation. So it explores expressive and figurative work in, of contemporary work of native artist Rick Bartow. And he lived from 1946 to 19, uh, 2016. So uh, while this, your guys are checking this out, KBGA will be hosting uh, DJ. Uh, so they'll be there playing some sweet, sweet music. So this is uh, basically the Oregon Arts Commission and the National Endowment of the Arts, a federal agency, uh, Balling Endowment, Philip and Sandra Peel, and JSMA members as well. So all sorts of things are put into this exhibit as well. There's a lot of uh, sponsorship as well. Spritzer is a uh, Oh, Schneitzer is one of the uh, uh, Missoula uh, Art Museum's biggest uh, contributor to a lot of the art that they put up there as well. And I think they did the Andy Warhol exhibit not so long ago here at the MAM. All right, moving on. October, the atoms of our frame, and this is going to be at Radius Gallery, so they're going to be some, some porcelain, some pots, and all that stuff, and it brings together three of Montana's uh, preempt preeminent artists I'm sorry I'm just like butchering all of these uh, fancy words but <laughs> it's not even that fancy probably too fancy for me uh, the title of the exhi uh, exhibit references uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson's essay on the potency of imaginative thought the act of imagination is ever attended by pure delight it infuses a certain vol volatility volatility and intoxication into all nature it has a flute which is set the atoms of our frame in a dance. Our immediate size is a delicious secret which it reveals to us. The mountains begin to dislim and float in the air. So that's some of the things you guys can check out at Radius Gallery kicking off at 5 p.m. today. Um, there's the uh, Shannon Callahan Design Studio and this is uh, by Antonia Wolf. Antonio Wolf, uh, some imagery. Uh, th so wild horses of the Prior Mountains and Cedar Mountains, tracking the shape of the wild wildness has been a personal journey for Antonia. Antonia explores creation 
in its all its forms, human life, natural world, and the animal world, each her each of her images tells a particular story held in time. Her images, even the most otherworldly landscapes, try to unearth humanity that could easily be overlooked. We got SpawnCon item in preview, and this is going to be at the Mercantile Hotel. So Mercantile Hotel is opening up for First Friday. Um, the 15th annual spontaneous construction was a tremendous success thanks to the efforts of so many people. Uh, the team knocked it out of the park, and they were excited to showcase their amazing creations. So this is one of their creations during the thing. This is an auction as well, so they have creative pieces and planned with items you bid on the auction. And in November, the Mercantile Hotel on first Friday today from 5 to 8 p.m., and of course, you know, celebrate with uh, teams, grab a drink, and take a look at what these amazing teams created in less than seven hours. So, spontaneous construction it is a great uh, um, event that's hosted at Home Resource for people to bring teams of all skill levels together and to make some amazing items. All right. Up next, we got Lake Bed Pop-Up Gallery. So Lake Bed Pop-Up Gallery is a gallery that just pops up out of nowhere. Welcome to the Lake Bed Pop-Up Gallery, one night only featuring works by artists Kara Duran and uh, Violet West. Come by for a snack for a new show. The show is called You See What You Want, and it's going to be at 145 West Front Street. It's a pop-up gallery, so you have to check outside and see what it's all about. And coming up next, we got Where I Roam. This is April Wero, uh, Radius Gallery, sidecar show. So... Um, this is kind of like adjacent to the Radius Gallery, and this is going to be uh, their, uh, their sidecar, which is th there's a little kind of like door to an alleyway, and it's like in that general area where you guys can see it. So Radius Gallery, and to the left of it, you can see like a doorway which opens up to this. So since uh, receiving her bachelor, her bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the University of Montana in 2017, Filipino-American international muralist April Wirrell has been wall hunting. Um, Ticking counties off, uh, or checking counties off her list from the shores of Morocco to the islands of, islands of Malaysia, the mountains of Montana, and walls in between. So it's a bursting of color murals and works on a panel offer, short narratives inspired by her navigation through her cultural upbringing and travels to foreign places. So you can check that out. It's going to be at the Radius Gallery, just right next to it. All right, Flight of Fancy. This is going to be at DraftWorks. Uh, uh, B. Martinez is going to be at DraftWorks, and what he usually does, he uses copper plates, and he draws into the copper plates. He also designed that huge uh, metal statue that's in Silver Park, and you get a chance to check it all out. I, I got a chance to meet him. He's a really nice guy. He'll probably be, be there. Um, so the show is called Flights of Fancy. Up next... Go figure. The Clay City of Missoula, to wrap things up, uh, this is, uh, the Clay City of Missoula is by Lowell School, so it's a little out of your way, So if you, but if you want to check it out, it's totally worth it. The Clay City of Missoula welcomes Helena-based ceramic, ceramicist um, Carla Potter for a solo exhibition in October as part of Carla's vocabulary as an artist working in the small-scale figurine that has a critical social commentary. She has always made a parallel body of work that is based on the parody of historic uh, artists or impression uh, impersonation of contemporary artists who she greatly admires and have had a personal and professional relationship with. So go figure. All right, so <laughs> that pretty much wraps up your art walk. I'm going to have all your events and more, but I have another video for you guys that will wrap up pretty much most of my videos that I have for you guys, but this is duh, uh, no, this is Citizens Academy. So this video I made in conjunction with Heather Harp at the City of Missoula and the Missoula Office of Neighborhoods, and here it is. Without further ado, here is the premiere of Citizens Academy. <laughs> decided to participate in the local government Citizens Academy because I wanted to learn a little bit more about how local government works behind the curtain um, and I've been involved in politics for quite a while but didn't really see the function of government in my political life. Pretty amazing that it was a, a free open thing granted it was sort of exclusive but that doesn't mean it can happen more than once. I was really impressed when we got to go to the fire department and um, see how the fire, the firemen put out fires, and the police department, uh, you know, had all their 
equipment and I even learned CPR. The session that surprised me the most was, uh, was the session on stormwater. Um, I think that something like that is not something I'd ever considered. So the session with uh, Missoula Redevelopment Agency was probably one of my favorite sessions. A um, lot of detail that goes into that and a lot of unknown information that's out there um, that, that we were able to learn through the course of that session. Well, I feel the initial course or the initial academy course um, really opened up my mind as to what the journey was going to be like and yet every week I was so surprised. Every week it felt like a stair step. Many times people come with preconceived notions about how a budget is arrived at and where we might have our own particular beliefs that you know maybe we're overspending here or overspending there. So had we taken the opportunity maybe at the beginning to just give a quick overview and then as we go through the various departments seeing what they do and how it actually interacts with the budget could be very helpful. Our system is so underfunded that we have to design our government as a complaint driven system. Budget is most difficult for me um, but to give it context I guess that gave the budget um, session a lot of context for me. All these things need to function and we also learned like how difficult it is and how underfunded a lot of these um, these services are. Creating a budget and using all these different resources that are limited in nature can really stifle certain kinds of creativity but they also encourage it at the same time. Through the course of the sessions we learn about each uh, each part of the city and how it works and by the time we got to the budgeting session we learned about the different priorities and that really I think helps when you're thinking about budgeting like what are our priorities are they this this and this so I think it was best to do it at the end because we had a better overall grasp of how the city works. One of my favorite takeaways from the Academy is that now I walk through Missoula differently and I've always considered myself an engaged citizen but now I'm an engaged, you know, maybe a quarter of the way knowledgeable, a lot more to learn, but I look at things differently. The parks, the police, the, the people in leadership. I come to more city council meetings. I go to committee of the whole meetings. I'm much more engaged and interested, and that is because of the academy. I think this needs to be an annual program. Uh, and I'd love to see that matriculate into being a kind of a regular type of program um, as long as you can get people interested and if I'm not mistaken I think there was quite a bit of interest in this program for the first go-around. Um, I just think the, the more ways you can get people involved and engaged the better. The structure of this Citizens Academy would be great in other cities. I think even when you think about the like urban rural divide, uh, my dad lives in Red Lodge, Montana and visiting him um, I know they have a mayor and a city council, and it's just much different. There's, I think, 3,000, 5,000 people in Red Lodge, and there's 75,000 here. So, I mean, you're just dealing, you know, an order of magnitude larger, and that would, of course, present different challenges. But I still think that residents of Red Lodge, Montana, would benefit from having a deeper engagement with how the city does things. If you don't complain, the city is not going to know anything is wrong and thus not address your problem or your question. It is not unreasonable to disagree. It is unreasonable to scream and be disagreeable. Part of how you sell future academies is that you'll meet people, your neighbors, in a, in a new way and you'll have this sort of secret kind of fight club look about you. Hey, Academy. What I believe right now, institutions as well as just the city, is the more we engage people, the better we will be.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening within the city of Missoula. There's a lot going on this weekend because it is homecoming week. Uh, homecoming weekend is happening. Your uh, parade is kicking off uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. But let's kick things off with see what's happening Friday morning. Your kids uh, have plenty of activities to go to. Let's kick it off this morning. Tiny Tales and Story Time. If your kid is uh, not in school and you want them to get out and do something, Tiny Tales and Story Time at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 a.m. is a perfect place for your kids to be involved with reading, checking out books, and getting connected with your local library. Hands-on science, uh, space experiments, and this is uh, for uh, kids who are uh, of any age, of any science background. If you have a kid that's under three, they get in free. It's 350 if you're four and over. Uh, celebrate World Space Week with, as they experiment with astronomy at the Discovery Bench. Uh, cardboard construction is in their makerspace right now. Yarns and Watercolor at the Missoula Public Library once again from 12 to 1 p.m. and it is a great way to create with yarn or just watercolor as well. And also, I just wanted to mention that the Missoula Senior Center does a cribbage and bridge group during the lunch time. It's a great place to be on the best dance floor in the city of Missoula. Um, connect with the uh, old aging community, the golden oldies, um, and just play some bridge and destroy pre people at cribbage or vice versa. G uh, Ga uh, Guinea, West Africa, come up, comes to UM and the Missoula community, um, UM uh, Dance Open Space Studio and Missoula Senior Center, also starting at around 1 p.m. right after cribbage and bridge. Uh, Missoula welcomes master dance um, uh, Ahasani, Kamara and master musician Amori Fofana to the UM School of Theater Dance in the Missoula County. They've been here all week and they're doing a dance lesson uh, today at 1 p.m. at the um, Par TV Building 005. At five at 7 p.m. there's a performance happening tonight as well. But uh, they're doing some drum, some dance, uh, some stand-up dun dun dance classes for the community. And the dance this afternoon is starting at 1 p.m. at the Missoula Senior Center. And of course, you know, first Friday events for the rest of the night, but if you plan on doing anything, Karis Park is having a event, a 13th annual Pray for Snow Party. For those of you who like skiing, snowboarding, uh, shushing, uh, cross-country skiing, all sorts of wonderful things happening from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Karis Park downtown. The Pray for Snow weather brings communities together for a night of beer, food, music raffles, and one heck of a good time. All proceeds benefit the Western Central Montana Avalanche Center. Um, also, Hands on Gretel will be at the MCT, uh, so all week long, um, kids have been working with MCT, uh, Missoula Children's Theater, to uh, get this show together. Uh, times are tough for modern day Hank and Gretchen until they find themselves deep in the wondrous wild woods of Hansel and Gretel. The Missoula Children's Theater proudly presents their, an original musical adaptation of the Brothers Grimm's age-old tale of, of a journey and a secret and a grand adventure. So there's a bunch of things happening tonight as well. Um, if you're interested in finding out more, you can go to the Missoula Events website. Um, so right here, MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's going on, Missoula? This is what's going on. So we're gonna scroll on down here and I'm gonna show you some of the late night events as well. So if you guys get a chance to check this out, you can go to the website. You know, they have some DJ drop culture music of the Badlander. They got Neon Lights of the Flying Squirrel. Last Chance Band is gonna be at the Sunrise Saloon. Some country music. Idle Ranch Hands will be some dance fun music at Union Club. And of, of course, Dirty Revival is gonna be playing some funk music at Top Hat Lounge. So those are your Friday events. Let's move on over to your Saturday events. All your Saturday markets are kicking off this morning as well but they also always have like a 5 10 uh, 5k uh, marathon happening just before the UM homecoming parade which kicks off at 10 a.m. and goes into about 11 a.m. maybe even 12 because they want to get right into the football game which starts uh, later uh, Saturday afternoon as well uh, but the UM homecoming parade we're gonna be broadcasting it on MCAT and if you want to watch it you can watch it online on our website MCAT.org. You can watch it on our Facebook page. You can watch it on our channel if you're a Spectrum um, Cable subscriber. So if you're watching this on Spectrum Cable, there you go. You're, you're already halfway there. Anyway, so starting at 10 a.m., we're going to be live uh, broadcast, live streaming, all that live stuff happening. MCAT.org for more information about that and more. But then, of course, right after the Homecoming Parade, we're going to be jumping on over to... Uh, MCAT for MCAT drop-ins and for your kids age 9 to 14 your kids can uh, for $10 a pop your kids can enjoy some stop animation Legos um, we got some sick bots we got a couple of fun little uh, things that they can bring life to through the power of stop animation but of course some kids like to make some live-action movies there's always a bunch of kids that come here so you might want to 
get there just in time. Uh, so National Public Lands Day, uh, willow planting is happening at Milltown State Park. It's going to be happening all day. Here in uh, Montana, our public lands have given us a lot to be thankful for. The, this National Public Lands Day, take the opportunity to give it back with the local public lands by planting willows in the Milltown State Park. Milltown State Park is a park that just uh, came out of the dam. So when the Milltown State Dam got removed, the water levels kind of seceded, and there was a lot of uh, potential for a park that they took, and it became Milltown State Park. So they're going to be uh, asking people to join for them at the Overlook starting at 11 a.m. There's also a 12 p.m. and a 1 p.m. Uh, hikes that are happening from those times. So they're there, the, these willows will help to dis, uh, encourage invasive weeds from returning and contribute to the overall restoration of confluence. Bring the, be prepared to hike at least two miles. A shuttle van will be available to those who, who need it, and you can see them at the Milton State Park Overlook. Hellgate Roller Derby is happening at Missoula Fairgrounds. This is their fourth bout, the fourth local bout, and it's going to be 4-H Pavilion at the fairgrounds. And, of course, for more information, you can go to their Facebook page, Hellgate Roller Derby. And it is the final. It's the last chance you get to see uh, the Hellgate Roller Girls until the next season, which will be about a uh, towards the middle and end of summer when they have more home bouts. But a lot of times they do a lot of uh, on-tour bouts throughout the state of Montana, uh, northwestern regions as well so that's kind of what's happening in and around uh the city of missoula and you guys can check it out by going on to the missoula events website once again that's missoula events.net missoula events.net is your wonderful resource for what's going on in missoula i don't know well go to this website so you can decide pick and choose and that's where i usually find all my events information as well uh, again i want to remind you guys to like us on our facebook page um mcat missoula's community media uh, commu uh, media missoula's community access to oh uh, wait Commu Missoula's Community Media Resource, MCAT.org. So, it's interesting that I just noticed this, but there's a logo up here, but then there's a logo down here that doesn't match it. So, listen to look at the logo that has the uh, media in uh, lime green, but ignore the one that's largely in the middle right there. So, uh, we'll have to change that. So, let's get on that. Okay, so once again, uh, follow us on Twitter at MCAT TV. You can like us on our Facebook page and more. I have another video for you guys. This is a bunch of new programs going to be airing, and this is a lot of the music, uh, a lot of music, a lot of uh, uh, art that's happening this weekend as well, but we're getting a lot of inspiration from the Far East. So without further ado, here's some of the new programs on MCAT, and then when I come back, I'm going to start wrapping up my show. In all of those years, when he came uh, to Montana, when he was just a boy, really, all those years cowboy and listening to all the old timers tell their stories of the buffalo herds and the native peoples. He kept all of those stories and images in his mind. And that's where he worked from. That was a special place that he had. And oh, I could do the business, handle our domestic life, take care of all the exhibits and the framing and the copyrights and the correspondence and the travels and the shipping. <sighs> and endure the way he thought I charged too much for his work. But I couldn't be with him in his own particular world. One of my fondest memories of Charlie is sitting in the parlor in the evening, and Charlie's there with a pad and pencil just working out some idea. And I knew, I knew in the coming days that idea would spill out onto canvas there and st <laughs>
lot of great programs on MCAT, Channel 189. You can watch all your city uh, council and community meetings on Channel 190. It is a great resource for us to provide for the community as well. If you are a person out there who is interested in doing a show like this or just general media, music video, that kind of stuff, we're here to help you. Um, and we usually have orientation. You can sign up online at our website at MCAT.org. It's uh, services. Join MCAT, borrow equipment, request a, pr request a recording, and submit a program. We offer trainings and uh, all sorts of wonderful opportunities as well. And I also wanted to mention that uh, we'll be doing a Editing 101 class starting in November, and I'll be sure to uh, let you guys know more about it as we get it closer and closer to it. So, All right, so that's all I needed to say about the morning show as well. If you're interested in finding out more, you can go to my website. All you got to do is look up Wake Up Missoula. And you can find me. It's that easy. All right. So I hope you guys wake up. And I hope you guys have a great and wonderful weekend as well. It is homecoming weekend. So without further ado, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. See you later.